Hey, good morning uh, or afternoon or evening, whenever you guys in Algebra 2 are watching this. Um, good to see you again. All right, so we are in Section 4, Chapter 2. That's 2.4. Uh, everybody have your textbooks open, all right? Always. Textbooks need to be open while you watch these notes. Have the book there. Have your notes copying down everything that needs to be copied down, okay? So in section four, we are talking about writing linear equations, and that is going to be going right back to the good old slope-intercept format, okay? So textbooks open. Let's jump into this. All right, so the first note that we have here you guys are going to kind of see it progress down the page because it all flows together, all right? So slope-intercept, that is y equals mx plus b. You can see that m right there, that always designates what your slope is. Make sure you understand that it's not the x included in that, all right? It's just the m that is your slope. In other words, it's the coefficient with x, all right? Not the x, okay? B, that is your y-intercept. In other words, that is where the graph will cross or touch the y-axis in the graph, okay? And then if you kind of flow down from M, you'll see slope, go underneath slope. Just to remember that is the rise over the run. So that's the up or down divided by the left or right, okay? Then next to the rise over run, you'll see the little equation there. And that's how you solve for slope, okay? So you're going to see that is y2 or sub 2 minus y1 all divided by x2 minus x1. Please understand that those little 1s and 2s with the x's and y's, those are not exponents, all right? Those are what's known as subscript. It's just a direction telling you use the second y value minus the first y value divided by the second x value minus the first x value, okay? And then if you're wondering, what does that even mean? Well, there's an example of a point. I took out the numbers and just replaced them with, that's really what they represent. You got the first x with the first y, that's the first point. And then the second point would be the second x with the second y. Okay, and then you would just replace all those in the equation, and you will see me do that in these example problems. Okay, let's take a look. One more little note there. There's another equation called point slope, and you'll see you have a y, and then you have a y1. All right, here's the difference. The y that's just by itself, that's the variable y. But then y1, that's actually going to be a number because you're gonna be given a point and you pull out the first y value, put it in y1, okay? M, that's still your slope. The x that's by itself, that is the variable x, but then x1 is actually a number. Again, you're gonna be given a point, pull out that x, the first x value, and plug it in right there. All right, let's jump into the first example problem. Everybody needs to be on page 115. CIO, check it out, number one. I'm just gonna talk you through it, all right? I'm not gonna copy down the graph. It's easy enough to talk you through this. So if you're looking at page 115, which you should be, this is gonna make a lot of sense to you. Okay, take a look at that graph. First, find the y-intercept. Where does the graph cross or touch the y-axis? I see that is actually at three, okay? So that would mean you're going to have a y equals, leave some space, and go ahead and put plus 3 because it crosses the y-axis at 3. Then, if you look at that graph, you see how there's another dot a little further up and to the right? They are telling you, hey, use the y-intercept and figure out how many times you have to go up and over to get to that other dot because that's going to be your slope. Looks like you have to go up three times, and then to the right, four times, giving you a slope of three over four, and then put x there. That's it. That is your slope-intercept equation. If you are given a graph, that's how you would come up with that equation. All right, let's move into the second example problem here. Calculate slope, and I'm going to give you your little cheat sheet 
All right, this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. All right, that's the last time I'm going to do that. You guys need to memorize it. You need to get that. Okay, now let's plug in those values into the slope equation. You have a negative 5 minus a negative 5, all divided by a negative 3 minus... Two. Okay, negative 5 minus negative 5, what is that actually going to equal? 0 divided by, in this case, it actually doesn't matter, because when you have 0 in your numerator, what is your answer? Your answer will be 0. All right, if you have 0 on top of a fraction, your answer is 0. But if you have zero on the bottom in the denominator of your fraction, your answer is undefined. There is a difference. Make sure you understand that. All right, let's move down. Let's do this one more time because we're going to have to put all of this into slope intercept, the actual equation. So let's go here. Let's use the slope equation first. So we're going to now have 5 minus a negative 3 all divided by 2 minus a negative 2. Okay, let's start to simplify this. You're going to have a little bit of add the opposite on top. That's going to give you 8. And then a little of that. That's going to give you a 4. So really, our slope value here is 2. Okay, there's m. Now you can plug in whichever equation. Let me scratch that. You can plug in whichever point you want to then figure out what the rest of the equation would be. What I do is I just always use the first point. Okay, that, that's just me. I just want to be consistent. So that means that right here is my x, here is my y. I know that there is my m, so the only value I do not have right here is b. So let's plug in values. Negative 3 equals, there's my m, here's my x plus b. All right, we don't have b, we need to get that, and then that will be the whole slope-intercept equation. So this right here gives us negative 4 plus b equals a negative 3. You're going to move that over. Negative 3. When you move it over, that's going to be plus 4. What does that equal? 1. So what is b? b is 1. All right. Let's go ahead and then plug in the values here. I want to make sure I get the right one. Okay. So now we will rewrite the equation. Let's use y. Our slope is 2. Put in x. And now the b is plus 1. OK. So finding our values there. Let's make sure I got the right one. OK. Slope intercept. Perfect. OK. So right there, that is going to be the equation. Let's get this boxed up. That is slope-intercept. All right, perfect. Next, let's move in to slope-intercept, but lines are parallel. And you know what? It looks like I got an extra note here. Let's erase that. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're back in business. So. If they are asking you to have slope-intercept format and you're going to have to create a brand new equation that is parallel to a given equation, and what do I mean by given? I mean this equation right here is given, but they want a second equation that will create a line that is parallel. Remember, parallel means that they're going to be never crossing. They essentially will be perfectly next to each other. Here's the note. Take a look at that right there. Parallel slopes 
will be the same. They will be equal to each other. So what does that mean? That means that this guy right here, that will also be the slope in our second equation. Then what do we use? We use this guy right here as our x and our y, and we will find out what the new b value is. All right, so let's do that. We have four equals, we know that this is our m value right there. So five, our x value was given with the point. Now we have to figure out what is b. Five times one, that's five, plus b equals four. Got to move that five over, so you're really going to get four minus five, meaning b equals negative one. Now put it all back together in the form of an equation and you get y equals 5x minus 1. All right, perfect. And let me see here, double check. All right, let's move on. Last example problem, bingo, perfect. Okay, so similar but perpendicular line now. So we have slope intercept format, but we want the perpendicular line for that. So perpendicular, remember that's gonna be making the cross or making a T shape right there, where we're gonna have one line going here and the other line is going that direction. Now, how do we make the slope for a perpendicular line? Take a look at that note. The slopes will be opposite reciprocals, okay? So that means that step one, this original slope, I have to take the opposite, which is now gonna be a negative because the original right there is positive, and then reciprocal, so flip it. So it's gonna be a negative six over five. That is my brand new slope. Then right here, I have my X, right here, I have my Y, now let's calculate the brand new B value, which is my Y intercept. All right, so I have a negative two, get some space here, equals negative six over five multiplied by zero, that's kind of nice, I'll cross that out, plus B. All right, let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. So negative six over five times zero, that's zero, that's great. All right, that works out excellent for us. So what does that mean B is? B is gonna be that negative two right there. Okay, we have the slope. Remember the slope, that's right there. That was the opposite reciprocal. We just calculated our B value. So now let's put it all back together to create the slope intercept that is perpendicular to the original. So now we have y equals negative six over five x minus two. That is the slope intercept equation that will be perpendicular to the original equation that in this case, that was the original right there. Okay, all right, that's all I got for you guys today. Keep working hard, stay motivated, all right? Ask questions if you have them, ask them through email, ask them in a Zoom, stay up to date with your homework, don't fall behind on your homework. And a little note for some of us, make sure that when you turn in homework, the homework is actually there. Don't hit turn in, but there is no homework, all right? I got a lot of students doing that. Okay, see you guys in the next video.